Yes guys, welcome back to another video and today, as promised, I am going to be fitting the water pump and thermostat to my Mark III Audi TT. These are pretty well known for leaking and going wrong, so obviously you change the thermostat and the water pump together. So I'll show you what we've got, what tools we're going to be using. I've written everything down in a book, like step by step, so I'll, take, like, oh, I'll keep it still for you to take a picture of if you want to obviously copy what I'm doing. I've never done this job before, so this is going to be my first time and I'm going to tell you if it's hard or not. Let's not waste time, let's get into it. There is quite a lot to come off the car, a lot to put back on, so we'll get into it now, what, we, what we've got, what we're using, and hopefully I can do this. So if we come over here, we have the parts, so we got a genuine water pump and thermostat housing. It comes with a union which goes in the cooler and there's a little belt there and a new nut there. I'm not too sure if I can change the belt because I'm pretty sure you need a tool for it. If not, I'm going to check the belt that's on mine. If there's no cracks or anything, I'll just reuse it. That's what we got in that box. And then for coolant, I've gone for Extreme G40 from Coma. That's what I saw a few people using. You can use G12 Plus or Evo, Evo Plus Plus or something like that. But this is what I'm going for. Some people probably say it's not right, but I've ordered it, so it's going in. If you're looking to buy this genuine one, I got this from Awesome GTI and it was $367.99, that's with postage and VAT. So it's quite expensive, but it's worth it. Now I'll just run through some of the tools we need. So obviously I've written everything out here. So we need a T25, a T30, 7mm socket, torque wrench, which I have under here. Nick this off my dad, so I've got a torque wrench. That's just to put the water pump back on, which obviously I'll tell you the newton meters when we get to it. We've got ratchets, which I've got a ratchet here, I've got a longer ratchet. A tub to catch the coolant, so I've got me tub here got a pry bar that's for getting the hose clamps off on the actual thermostat housing you need a pick i haven't got a i haven't got a pick yet i need to go and grab one of them screwdriver flathead got one of them a coolant fill tool now i haven't got one of these because you need an air compressor to use this if you've got one then it's ideal i'm gonna just fill it up and leave the coolant lid off and hope for the best hopefully it bleeds itself if not then I'll have to figure something out when we get to that. Got some hose clamp pliers. So I paid £4.99 for these off of eBay. It just makes it easier for this style of hose here. See, the, they're quite a trick. If you've got like just normal pliers, they're a bastard to do. So that's what we got those for. A light. We've got a light here somewhere. That's going to be mainly for underneath because it's probably going to be dark under there. What else have I got? I've got, got a whizzer. Snap on wizard and all these. I don't need all these. Got gloves. Got some of this here. Oh, what's they call this? Uh, scotch pad got some of that that's to clean where the water pump seals also as usual i've got some tubs so i've got some for the tt under tray top of the engine and bottom of the engine you can just put them all together if you have good memory but i do this just so i know exactly where they've come from all right just try and get this close for you if you want to take pictures so this is the strip down so if you want to get a picture of that i'll do it in sections for you if you can't read my writing i do apologize But just uh, comment and I will reply to obviously help you out. So that's the strip down to there and then this is the build back up. There's not as much in this. Hopefully you can see this on the screen. Just keep pausing it if you can't. Yes, yeah, so there you go. That's everything I've written down for the procedure. That's what I'm going to be copying exactly here. Well, you'll know if it works because my car will be fixed at the end of this video. If not, then I'll have to alter it. <laughs> yeah, right, let's get into this now. So you got everything you need, you got all organized. Now we're not going onto the top of the engine and we're going to start stripping this thing down. So I'm going to follow the step-by-step -step and see if a YouTube mechanic, mechanic, can fix the thermostat and water pump on his Mark III Audi TT. This also goes for the TTS, the A3, the S3, I'm pretty sure there's a few others as well, maybe the GTI, I think, I think the GTI, yeah. So it goes for quite a few cars, so it'll help a lot of the platform. So the first thing we're gonna do here is take off the coolant cap. Now this is to do with the pressure in the hoses. When you undo the hoses, obviously this is a pressurized system. It shouldn't be pressurized now, really. There will be a bit in there. Yeah, so the videos I've been watching, they take that off. So to take that off, that is step one. And as I go through, I'm going to highlight the ones I've done. So this is just so I don't get mixed up. So every step I do, I'm highlighting it to know I've done it. Step number two, remove the engine cover. This just pulls up. Depending on your platform, I think most of them will just pull off. So take this off, remove that. Now you're going to want to remove this coolant line just here out of these holders. So pop that out the way. And then with your T25, undo these two bolts to remove to 
this top cover. So what you want to do here, if you just look just by here, there, I'm going to lift that and pop that cover off. So we're going to put that over here, all my parts to take off and then neatly place here. Now we're going to remove the air box and the intake pipe. We're just, where is it? Just at the back, just down here, there is a seven mil. Obviously yours might be in a different position. So I'm just going to go ahead now and undo that. Now you just got to remember, I have never done this job. So if I do anything wrong, do let me know. And then once we've undone that seven mil, we're going to undo this, cl this clamp here. This is where the new tool is going to come in handy. This is the tool we're going to be using for that. If you want one, eBay fiber. I'll basically put you in position. Just show you how easy this works. You see there? Yeah. So you literally just grab it, put that on there. That hooks into that bit, pull it move it uh, put that there and then release it there you go as easy as that that's the best fiver i've ever spent now we're going to head and move the intake pipe so we've got the intake pipe off and then this hole here where the intake pipe was just cover it so i'm just going to put some blue roll in there because so you don't want anything falling down that so now we come to the air box there is a vacuum line just here okay there we go so that pipe's off and then this is literally held in with grommets so what the guy said is just pull it. So yeah, literally just pull it up. It's held on by a grommet at the back here and one on the side. And then this just comes out of the duct in here. So that's the air box off. Next, we're going to be removing this actual air duct here. There is a T25 here and a T25 here. And then on each side, there's like two little tabs just here. So the guy said you just lift that and or push it down so just push down on that lift and push down try and get this one in there we go pop that off so that is the air duct out we need to undo this seven millimeter on the throttle body pipe just here so we undo that you use your pick around the edge just to basically release it from the throttle body so they get a bit crusty and stuck together so now that's loosened off i'm going to unplug the throttle body plug so just before undoing the plug use a pick here just uh this sits on there like that just pull this down makes it easier to move this plug out the way then so we'll move that out the way so that's that so now we're going to use the pick inside here to hopefully clean some of the crap out in between the pipe and the throttle body now we're coming underneath the car it's quite tight for me this but if you look just there i think that's the map sensor there so you need to undo that off the charge pipe next so let's see if i can do this with one hand i don't have very much room i'm not gonna be able to do this with one hand i don't think yeah right let me get this plug off now we got the plug undone just over there just behind this pipe here if you look there it is there that's undone now you want to undo this seven millimeter on the charge pipe because we need to get this pipe off this bottom pipe here right so we're gonna do this pipe and well, there might be a little bit of oil in here so uh it's best to put something under this i think i've just got the box from the water pump here just in case there's oil in here because there can be oil inside these so we're just gonna undo this you just want to use the pick inside here like this try not to stab it through the actual pipe you just want to try and get around it to loosen it basically so hopefully now i can get that off there we go it's coming off right so is there any oil in there yeah a tiny bit so don't be alarmed if there is oil in there oil does pass through this system obviously if there's a lot of oil then maybe be a bit alarmed this hose here you want to take it out of this clip here so you just push that bit back, pull it back like that, and then remove that from that clamp there. Right now, we need to get two T30s out of this. So this is what holds the charge pipe on. There's one, literally, you see it there? Not this one, the one next to it there. If you feel the plastic around it, you feel it goes to the charge pipe. So there's one there, and there is one. So on the front end of the charge pipe, right in the middle, you can feel it, it's just behind there. So I'm gonna undo these two T30s and then hopefully that charge pipe's ready to come down near enough. Oh, so I'll undo these now. So I've undone the two T30s holding the pipe on and I just used the little pry bar there. If you look, oh, let me try and get under. I ain't got much room, so it's fucking awkward. I literally just stuck the pry bar, see that little metal lip there? Just lean it against that to pull, pop this away, basically. Don't put it on the plastic, because obviously you might break it. So I put it on that lip, that metal lip there and just gently pushed, pushed against it. So that's come loose now. So now we've done that, we're going back to the top of the car. Now we're coming onto these two plugs here. So these just literally sit 
in this there's like a slide in rail thing see there these slide into that basically so you pull them out and then you unplug these two plugs here so this one and this one they're located just next to the throttle body underneath the inlet here two of them so i'm going to go ahead now and try and undo these in tab out so the trick with these is push them into each other pull the tab and then slide out this one's a bit tight there we go so that's them two unplugged don't yank them or stick anything in there. I used to yank them and I did break a few. But I have learned my lesson and I've learned how to get them off properly, which is good. So now what you would do, well, I've already done this plug here, move it over to where the airbox was, just so it's out the way. But I've already done that, so that's that step done. We're on this step now, so it says remove the hose on the metal pipe. Now on the video, there's a metal pipe that goes across the top of here, across the top of the fan. Now this, my TT doesn't have that. That was on the S3 that I was watching, so the S3 must have that, but I don't have that. So I'm just gonna skip ahead now to, so move pipe over. So yeah, so these ones, these three here, I can't do, I don't have these. So now we're gonna move on to unplug fan assembly, big red clip. So if I'm looking down here, so there's nothing that side. Yeah, so the, the one we're after, this is a big red clip just here. It's on the, where the air box would be, it sits just in front of that. So the one with the big red clip down here, where my thumb is, we need to get that unplugged. We gotta take fan assembly out. It looks like, we might have to we might have to unplug this actually i don't think he has that on the s3 either by there so if that's if we unplug that get that out the way it'll make it easier to pull this fan assembly out so i'm going to undo this this is going to pull out a load of coolant so now i'm going off track to what the video is but obviously this is different to the s3 slightly so and i'm learning that just now so i'm gonna try and pull this out and get this this off and then coolant's going to come out so i need to get me bucket under it i'm aware it's going to land it's probably going to go freaking everywhere let's put this under just by there let's have a look let's see if i can just get this line up next somewhere it's going to be around there isn't it so we're going to skip those three steps i'm going to take this pipe off here just going to pull this off and coolant's going to go everywhere like so let's just have a look at that I'm catching majority of it, that's good. Just gonna let that drain for now. Cause now we'll have that out the way there. As you see, that'll be out the way. We'll be able to uh, get the fan assembly out. Chuck that pipe behind this plastic holder here for the battery terminal, just hook it behind there. Now we're just looking down here. Pull that out of there. So that, so this pulls out of its little holder. So you wanna pull, see this little red clip? Right, so yeah, pop that up. Just inside there, there's like a, get that under the black lip, lift it up slowly. You can see that there. I don't know if you can get if I can get closer. I'm gonna lift up the black lip inside there and then pull it apart. Now that we have unplugged the fan assembly, it's ready to come out. Uh, so it's held on. If you look here, there's plastic tabs. There's one on each corner. So the two on the top we need to focus on the most because they're the ones that lock it in place. So I'm gonna fight to get these out and then I'll tell you how I get them out. These are quite a pain in the ass to get out. So there's a tab on here. You push it in and you can pull it out. Got one side out. There, I think I got it. There, I got it. Right, now we need to tackle this thing out. Somehow. <laughs> there we go. So there we have fan assembly removed. So we can put that to one, one side. Well, than actually that hard to get out. The best thing to do is get closer now. So you see this top tab, make sure it's still on. See this top tab just here? Get a screwdriver into the groove and literally push it in and pull the radiator up at the same time. And it pops straight out. And then once you've done it both, to get it out, pull it up from this side. You just gotta work it and it'll come out. But I pulled it up from this side, forced it round and it's come out piece of piss. So now we've got this big gap here with the, obviously this is out of the way now. So we can move on to the next step now. The order we're on now is telling me to undo the bottom water pump hose and the middle water pump hose. But to be honest, this is in the way here, this pipe. I would like this out of the way before I go and do that. So I think I'm gonna remove, so we need to undo this here. We need to take this pipe off of here. We need to take this pipe here, take this pipe off. These two T30s, there's one here and one here. And then basically move that pipe there, just over there out the way. So we're going to do that next before I take any of them hoses off. And using a little tool here, we're going to remove this hose. Hopefully this tool can do it. This hose shouldn't be too small for it. We're going to move that over there. Now we're going to undo the one that's just down here. That's that one. Clean around the edge of this. So there's that one off. Now that's off. We got this off, you can see. Just gonna tuck it, 
over here basically and i can just chill over there somewhere i was struggling to see the hoses on the water pump which are just down here it's because i had this still and i forgot to take it off obviously i hadn't done everything but i left it there so obviously get that off and then you can get to the what's it called get to the hoses on the water pump then so that's what we're going to undo now we're going to do the three hoses there's one on the bottom here you can see there's one in the middle which is by here here and then the top one so we're just going to try and get those off now always make sure you got your bucket underneath like i have because every pipe is taken off so far more coolant comes out that's the bottom pipe off there so now we're going to get to this one in the middle it's a bit hard to see to see where this this pipe is we need to get that one off now i now have all three of the lines off water pump so the water pump's coming into vision now so now just underneath this uh throttle body here there's the throttle body Let's see if i can get you down uh just here one two three there's four t30s to remove we've got to take the throttle body off now so your best bet here to get these throttle body bolts is from underneath you can get all four from underneath i've dropped one in the bloody coolant tub just my luck, isn't it? So we've got two out. Oh, I've got three out. One's in the coolant tub, like I said. It's a little bit awkward to get these from the top because you can't uh, see them, basically, They're underneath, aren't they? As we're getting all four of these out, and then the throttle body could come off. I don't know if it's just going to fall. I shouldn't do. It's got a gasket in it, they're quite tight. Let's try and get that there. Got it. Right. All four of them are... All four of them are out. Ow. Let's just make sure we get them all. There's one, two, three, and the ones in the coolant tub. Let's put them in that top one there. All right, I should be able to remove this now. There we go. There's the throttle body off. Probably give that a clean before it goes back in. Where's the gasket gone? That came off as well. Give this a clean up before we put it back in. Next step, we need to move, well, remove, just under here that black cover there just there we need to remove that that will reveal the belt then it's like a little belt on it uh so that's what that say that is two t30 holding that on there's one at the top and one at the bottom which i can see just down there Let's see if i can get you in oh. Oh. it's a bit hard to get you in right so one at the top which is here one at the bottom which is hard to see but it's by where my finger is right by there so i'm gonna undo these take that belt cover off and then we'll get on to the next step one cloud above my head blue all around just one black cloud starting to rain on my head but i ain't stopping because i've nearly got this water pump out now we are not far away mate the hardest thing to get out was one of them bolts on the bottom of this cover right so what i've had to do so this this hanger here that holds these plugs on undo the two t30s that hold it on from underneath so now, hopefully I can move this bloody thing out of the way somehow. So now we can get a belt cover off, which is just down here, hopefully. There's a the belt cover for the thermostat. So that's off. Now you can see the belt just there. See it just there? We need to walk that off now with a pick. Wherever my pick's disappeared to, there it is. This is a bit more of a long-winded video, obviously, because I'm trying to show you step by step what to do with this bloody thing. So just get your pick next to it there, and just slowly walk it off side to side. Try not to stab it if you're going to reuse it, of course. Get this off of your fingers now. There we go. So we got the belt off the off the pulley now. That's all we need. That there. Now I think we're on to the last part, which is unscrew the five. Five something, I'll tell you what they are now. Bucks falling apart. So now we're gonna be doing the five T30s holding on the water pump to the, to the block, basically. There's three up top. I'll point, I can't really see them, but I'll point. There's one here, one here, and one here. There's three up top, and then there's two at the bottom, which, let's see if I can see them from the rear. There's one there, you can see it there, and then there's another one. Bottom ones are gonna be pretty awkward, I think, because I'm so low down. Right, I'm gonna crack these off, and then I'll show you where they are because I think the bottom ones are going to be awkward. So here we have the water pump and the thermostat housing is out. You can see, you can look there, see that? You can see around there where mine's been leaking, it's gone rusty and it's uh, you can see there's a crack, not a crack, but a split where it's been leaking. So yeah, that has been leaking. Good job of changing it. These are electronic, electronically controlled as well. Uh, there is a plug underneath to unplug, but 
I did that once I pulled it away from the car. So there was three bolts on the top. There's one here, one here, one here on the top. And on the bottom there's one just underneath. You can feel it there and there's one there. So that's a reference. One there, one there, one there on the top. And then one here, one here. So for the one on the left hand side underneath, you can feel it underneath. You'll feel it underneath there. Yeah, I see what they mean now. You can't get the belt off because the under here, the pulley is in the like it's almost up against the block. So you've got to remove that pulley, I think. I don't know if you need a special tool for that, because apparently you do. So just looking in here, if you can see, hopefully, there is a little gasket stuck to there, so we're going to take that off. I'm not sure if we've got a new one, we should do. Keep that there, just in case we need it. And then, if you look here, the Union is still stuck inside the cooler there, so we're just going to pull that out. Oh, you know, it's stuck in there. All right, I'm going to pull that out quick. So there we have it. Just following that step, step, step-by-step step guide that I've done. I have got the water pump out, Union's just there, gasket there. So that pump is out. We've got the new one on the table ready to go in. Just got to take that cap off the end. I'm going to do exactly the same now, follow my build-up procedure here that I've written down and hopefully get this car back together. It wasn't too hard to do. That was pretty easy to take apart. A couple of bolts were awkward, like the back bolt on the belt cover. That was quite awkward to get to. And there was a couple of other bolts underneath the water pump. Them two were quite awkward to get, but other than that, it was pretty easy. Now, putting it back together is going to be the awkward bit, probably, because I've got to get this lined up. So I've got to get the union, the belt, everything lined up with it. So we're going to take that off there. So let me get this in. So I'm going to think what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the union into the cooler, and I'm going to use some coolant, some coolant just to lube up me seals here. You can use lubricant if you got it, like a lube for the seals, but coolant can work just to... Just to moisturise it basically so when I pop it in it doesn't split them. So we're going to do that and what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and push, I'm going to put the belt on and then try and guide the union into the thermostat for, for on the car. This bit's going to be tricky so you're going to have to bear with me but I'll get back to you once I got it in. So after trying many times to get the water pump in and struggling because I couldn't line the union and the belt up and I wasn't 100% sure if it was going in, I decided to remove the inlet as you'll see, I'll tell you after how to pull it out. And if you want to talk up the water pump, it's nine newton meters. Now let's get back into putting this car back together and finally get it on the road. All right, so I've just been fighting for ages to get the inlet back on. So you undo all these bolts. See the silver ones? Undo all them. You need to pull this pipe off here with this hose, hose clamp. Nightmare to get off and on. Got to unplug this, unplug this, uh, unplug that plug there there's a plug just down here see where my finger is unplug that you got to take this vacuum line off this and you got to unplug once you've pulled it away you got to unplug all the fuel rail well all the injector lines on the inlet there's four of them and then you've got to pull it out basically uh, from from this side pull it towards you because it's quite hard to get out by here that's how you do it that's in quick time because I couldn't show you, I'm running out of light slowly and I want to get this car running. So now we're going back to fitting the water pump. So the water pump's now in, all the pipes are connected. I've got a few more bits to sort out here, trying to figure out where everything goes. So I can put this back on now, I think. Put this back on here and then I can plug these in and hook them back up. Ugh. Right, now I've got to put the throttle body back in. I do apologise for doing this quick. I have literally not got long left before it's pitch black. I want this done today. So now, can I get the throttle body back underneath the inlet? So I'm going to do that quick now. Now time for the fan to go back in. I really hope none of this is leaking. Now we've got to put this back in the charge pipe and the hose. So I'm going to go under the car. I'm going to go under the car and get this done quick. It's getting dark fast now. All right, air duct's going back in now. I haven't got very high hopes. I've got a feeling there's going to be something wrong because there always is whenever I do anything. You know, I'm trying. This is going back on and I have no bolts left, which normally is a good sign, but I'm a bit worried. I'm hoping that the, what's it called, the union thing, that thing that goes in the cooler, it's hoping that's uh, sealed correctly. It was, it was in, well it was in, but as if it's sealed right, I do not want to be taking all this back off. 
It's easy to get off. Putting it all back together is a pain in the ass. All right, now I need to fill the coolant. And then uh, I take, taking that little bag out of there as well. Don't know if you can see it. It's just down there. I'm gonna try and grab it, get that out. There she is, the little silica, silica bag I think it's called. But yeah, we're getting rid of that. And now I'm gonna fill up the car. And hopefully there's no leaks. Got the coolant in there now, so it's on the max. It's gonna drop some when I start it. If it starts, obviously I've had the fuel, what's it called, the fuel uh, fuel line off, so it might take a bit to prime. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not looking forward to this. I hope it's not leaking. I shouldn't do because I'm sure the effing went right. I, I've talked it to the specs and everything, so let's just put the ignition on, see if that does anything. <laughs> Nothing's leaked out so far. Alright, let's start it and see what happens. If it starts. <laughs> and then pass. As of yet, I do not see no leaks. Just gonna let it run. So we're gonna have to let this do its thing. So what I'm doing now, just letting the car run basically. Just seeing if it overheats, making sure all the air is out of the system. At the minute, it's sitting at 90, which is where it normally sits. It's been on there for a bit, it's not moved. I'm just waiting for the fans to come on in. Just to confirm that obviously, circulating enough then. They're not on just yet, but I'm just keeping an eye out. But so far, so good. There's no leaks. The car's been running for ages now and nothing's come out the bottoms, which is obviously good. So I'm just gonna let it run and keep an eye on it. And hopefully that is the job done. So I will let you know once uh, I've confirmed the car's good. All right. My heat is a boiling now, so I've knocked the car off, dropped back down to 90 now, so we'll keep it on for a minute. My heat is a boiling, so that means we've got circulation. Otherwise they wouldn't heat up, they'd take the piss basically. Uh, so I'm just going to leave the cap off for a bit longer. As soon as that starts to like bubble a tiny bit, I'll put the cap on. But I think we might be alright now, because normally once this heats up, this normally means it's circulated. That's what I've learned in the past. If these are cold, you're going to overheat. But they're boiling now. They weren't a minute ago. So I'm just going to let this run up and then try again. Right, guys, it's a bit dark in here, is it? Do I have a bloody... Right. So, apologies for the light. Car's now not overheating. And I've driven it and it, it's pretty decent now, to be honest. It's driving nice. I'm quite surprised that I've managed to even put this back together because I've had quite a lot of stuff off. For me, that's quite a big job. And uh, obviously not being a mechanic. So I'm quite happy I've managed to do that. We do have a few more things coming. I haven't put the under tray back on because I've got something coming for underneath the car, which is going to be a good video as well. And I got something for the engine bay coming as well. Got something coming for Abby's car, so there's loads of videos to come. Obviously, if you've got any questions about what I've done here on today's video, please give me a message and I'll catch you in the next one. So, thanks for watching. Please give it a like, comment if you think I did a good job. I think I did. The car's running, that's the main point, right? Uh, yeah, but I had to take the inlet off and apologies for rushing some of it because it started getting dark very early and I, was, I didn't want to be doing that in the dark. So, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Peace.